How can 5,000 plus Navy sailors poop on an aircraft carrier? Imagine living at sea in a huge building with thousands of co-workers. It seems like a crazy idea, right? Sailors and Navy officials actually make the ocean their home for the majority of the year. If I think about it, one of the first questions which comes to mind is how did they all go to the toilet? Perhaps that's just my crazy way of thinking, but that's what we will discuss in this video. One of the things we will cover is how many toilets there are on an aircraft carrier, how they dispose of their waste, and how they maintain proper hygiene. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of toilets on an aircraft carrier. Typically, massive aircraft carriers can accommodate over 6,000 sailors on a single journey, which is equivalent to the population of two small villages. However, these carriers are surprisingly confined within a length of around 1,092 feet. As a result, basic necessities like food, water, sleep, and of course, proper sanitation facilities are provided, but they are just the bare minimum. Considering the number of adult men that these vessels need to house, there are approximately 432 toilets on the larger aircraft carriers. This may not seem like a lot, but when you're in the middle of the ocean, you have to make the most of what you have. To understand what happens to the waste material flushed on an aircraft carrier, let's begin with an unrelated story that will eventually tie everything together. In the Navy, using the restroom is commonly referred to as a head call. Despite the peculiar name, this terminology has a technical explanation. On an aircraft carrier, the toilets are actually called heads. This tradition dates back to a time when only the ship's captains had private restrooms near their quarters in the rear of the ship, known as the stern. The rest of the crew had to use toilets located closer to the waterline at the front of the aircraft carrier known as the bow. The proximity to the ocean allowed the water to flush away waste effectively. Additionally, it's important to note that the ship's movement is typically in the opposite direction of the wind, ensuring that the restrooms are located downwind to prevent lingering odors. However, modern technology has advanced enabling modern ships to be equipped with holding tanks and manual or motorized pumps. This allows toilets or heads to be installed almost anywhere on the ship. These heads no longer rely on ocean waves for flushing but instead, discharge the waste out to sea. Yet even the flushing process becomes slightly complex, technical, and expensive when at sea. The waste from toilets undergoes a systematic process before being released into the sea. When a sailor flushes, it triggers a chain of interconnected processes that require a significant amount of time, money, and infrastructure to ensure proper cleansing and safe disposal of the waste. Managing the flushed sewage produced aboard a carrier is a crucial task, as it is the most disposable material on the vessel and demands meticulous attention to detail. The sewage cannot be kept on board for an extended period due to sanitary reasons and must be discharged into the ocean as soon as possible. However, there's a catch. Simply disposing of the waste material into the sea without treatment or cleansing is not permissible. The U.S. government has recently implemented new restrictions regarding the disposal of sewage on aircraft carriers. A significant portion of the sewage waste generated on an aircraft carrier originates from toilets, urinals, and end sea scuppers. According to the regulations, the sewage must undergo a cleansing process before it can be discharged into the ocean. Additionally, the ship must be positioned at least four nautical miles away from the nearest shoreline to comply with these regulations. This process involves a few more steps compared to the simple and quick process commonly found in homes, which only requires a push of a button in a few seconds. Now let's delve into an intriguing question. How much sewage waste do you think is produced by the toilets on an aircraft carrier? To better understand this, let's consider the example of the Ford aircraft carrier, the latest carrier in the United States. It accommodates approximately 4,539 sailors, including both Marines and sailors. These individuals naturally generate waste at regular intervals, often using the washrooms first thing in the morning after waking up. However, many sailors are unaware of the entire process involved in treating and cleansing this waste, just like most of us. On ships, the wastewater is categorized into two types, black water, commonly known as sewage, which comprises solid waste flushed down the toilets and gray water, which includes water collected from bathroom sinks, showers, laundry, and galleys. It's crucial to treat bilge water separately, as it contains oils discharged from the machinery in the engine compartments. Discharging these oils directly into the ocean would cause significant harm to marine life. When black water enters the integrated treatment system on the carrier, it initially passes through an aeration chamber or bioreactor filled with bacteria responsible for breaking down organic pollutants dissolved in the wastewater. The sewage is then pumped into a membrane filtering system that further eliminates contaminants from the water, ensuring its safety. The wastewater that has been effectively cleaned by the biofilter reactor is then transferred to the next chamber, which functions as a settling process to separate the particles. After settling in the sedimentation tank, the mixture is further divided into high-grade water and sediment. 
This step is followed by processing in the clarity compartment, typically designed as a hopper with sloped sides. These sloped sides serve the important purpose of preventing the sludge from accumulating and piling up. Instead, it directs the sludge toward the suction side of the airlift tube. The untreated sludge, which has settled at the bottom of the sedimentation tank, is pumped back into the biofilter reactor for further breakdown by microorganisms. But hold on, we're not done yet. The next set of treatment processes takes place at the air blower. Usually, the biofilter reactor is equipped with two air blowers, with one serving as a standby. The primary air blower supplies air in the form of bubbles, which aids in the transformation of microorganisms, flushes the sludge, transfers it from the sedimentation tank, and also provides air to the activated carbon tank. Before being discharged into the ocean, the treated sewage must pass through the discharge pump. The discharge pump located in the final chamber of the sewage treatment plant is configured in a duplex arrangement and consists of centrifugal pumps connected to their respective motors. The automatic mode of operation of the pump is regulated by level switches installed in the sterilization tanks. Normally, the pump operates in manual mode when removing sludge from compartments after tank cleaning. Now we're nearing the end of the process. At this stage, the water is nearly clean and sterile. Harmful germs and bacteria that could contaminate the water have been fully eliminated, making them suitable for disposal in the ocean. However, the water is stored in a storage tank because gray water, which typically contains only a small number of potentially harmful germs, requires minimal treatment before being discharged far out to sea. It may not come as a surprise, but aircraft carriers often experience more frequent toilet clogs compared to regular homes. This is due to the waste not passing through as easily. When a sailor flushes instead of smoothly going down, solid waste, also known as poop, tends to get stuck. This poses a significant problem for everyone on board. To address this issue, new and advanced types of toilets have been installed in the latest aircraft carriers. Additionally, the ship's sewage system is periodically cleaned using specialized tools, which comes at a considerable cost of $400,000 for deep cleaning. A congressional audit has revealed underestimated long-term maintenance costs, totaling $130 billion. The report states that the new toilets are experiencing more frequent and unexpected clogging, leading to unplanned maintenance. Consequently, stringent actions are being taken throughout the service life of the ship. Many individuals have also raised concerns about insufficient flush suction and narrow pipes that hinder the proper disposal of waste, exacerbating the problem further. Alright guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe for more.